Today is January 14th, 2016. This is Expect a Miracle. And this week, this whole week uh, of January, we we're talking about the topic of sin. So I am Pastor Ken. I have a church down in Berlin called uh, Rampart Christian Fellowship. And uh, you know, me and Pedro have been friends for a long time. I used to lead a ministry at the Calvary Chapel in Las Lunas called The Truth. And he used to bring the guys when they had the home down in Las Lunas over there to the truth that. and and so before we get into the study I'm, so you guys might have never never met me before I'm going to go ahead and share a little, little bit of my testimony in 2005 I was arrested uh, I was I was in MDC I was uh, facing a nine-year prison sentence for manufacturing crystal meth I was an atheist I was homicidal suicidal depressed mm. Uh, I was I had I had basically just ruined my life. I went all the way through the Albuquerque dope game in the, in, in the meth area here. I started just doing it on the weekends. Went from doing that to selling it to cooking it, and went the whole round. And then by 2005, I was I was done. You know, my life was over, and I was sitting in a jail cell, literally banging my head against the cement wall. And a guy I knew from the streets looked, leaned into the leaned into the cell and said. The weirdest thing I ever heard anybody say, he said, Jesus loves you. And I was like, what? I, I was an atheist at the time. An atheist is a person who doesn't believe, that believes there is no God. So, so at that time, the guy said, Jesus loves you. And I was like, are you kidding? And he's like, no, seriously, man, Jesus loves you. And that was the first time. I was 30 years old at the time. That was the first time I'd ever considered that Jesus Christ was real. And so you got plenty of time in jail to think. So I sat there and I thought about it. So Jesus, you know, Christmas, Easter, that Jesus, that, that Jesus is real. And that it really just started to blow my mind. So I started to go to Bible studies. This one preacher came in, and, and I don't remember what he said, but I remember after he was done, I talked to him. I was like, listen, man, I, I don't know about all this Jesus stuff, but I, I, I just want to die. I'm done living. I can't stand this life anymore. I messed, I, I made a... Uh, a, a ton of mistakes. Everything I've tried to do is ever, uh, ever tried to do has failed, and and so I just wanted to die. And he says, "Well, listen, let me let me just pray for you." So he prayed for me, and it didn't seem like anything changed. But I don't know. It was it was weird. A couple days later, I got moved into a different cell in the same pod, an F unit in MBC, and there was a big, tall black guy, me, and a short guy from Sanho. And, and he was, and, and so we're all sitting in the cell chilling, you know, we're getting along just fine. And, and all three of us were, were just starting to talk about God. And the black guy, he was raised in, in church. And so he started telling us about it. And, and he said the weirdest thing. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm going to do what I should have done a long time ago. And that's put Jesus Christ first. And I didn't know what he was talking about because I, I was not raised in church. You know, I mean, I was, I was raised in Belen, New Mexico just doing whatever. I went to church maybe four times my whole life before that. And it was my grandma brought me to Catholic church. But that was about it. So he said, put put Jesus first in our life in, in, in my life. And so we all started the craziest thing happened is that you know three grown men in a, in a jail cell in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and, and we just all started bawling. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I'm crying right now. But the Holy Spirit fell in that jail cell in 2005, I felt the reality of God. Oh. It actually hit my heart, and I, and I felt, and, and the sin was just coming out through my eyes, and that was, it was a, an amazing experience. And ever since that day, I've never doubted the existence of God. I was like, God is real. And, and the craziest thing, and it kind of leads into this study, as soon as I came to the reality that God was real, that was, then it was like, uh-oh, if God is real, all I've ever done is sin. <laughs> And so, so that, that that conviction hit my heart right away. I mean, I was, I was a meth cook, you know. I, I, you know, everything you saw on the show Breaking Bad, you know, I pretty much, I didn't, I didn't, you know, dissolve anybody's body in a in a in acid or anything like that. But, <laughs> but, but it definitely got crazy. I mean, that show really. I mean, it, it's not too far off what what really goes on yep. in this city. And so, I'm, I'm sitting there. I come to the realization that God is real. And I come to the realization that all I've ever done is sin. So let's let's go ahead and open up in prayer, and then we're going to get into the study on sin. Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for these men here. I pray for each one of their hearts. I pray that you that you would give them ears to hear and eyes to see what you what you would speak to them today. I pray that you would that you would uh, cause them to gain knowledge today, Lord, and, and not only that, just draw them closer to you through the through the reading of your word and through the through the 
preaching of your gospel. We just thank you and praise you and we give this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs> praise God. So sin. What's the deal with sin? What's the, you know, what, you know, everybody just you know, talks about sin. What's going on with that? So first of all, you gotta, you got to understand, just like I, I did when I first came to the belief in God, <coughs> sin is real. <laughs> it's a real thing. So in order to be, uh, be a Christian, there are many things you need to believe by faith. First of all, first thing you need to do to become a Christian, you need to believe that God's real. And this is coming from somebody that was not a believer and became a believer. And first thing I had to do is I had to believe that God is real. Second thing I had, had to do is believe that the Bible is actually true. I mean, because you know, a lot of people will say God is real. But then a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know about that Bible, though. You know, I might, it's written by man, you know, but... But if you want to be a Christian, you got to believe by faith. Not by evidence, not by not logical reasoning, by faith that God is real and that the Bible is true. And that's just a, a, a decision you make on your own. According to the free will that God has given you, you decide to believe that God is real, the Bible is true. And the third, and probably the most important, you have to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is God. He became a man. And, and, and lived for 33 years and died on a cross and, and is the Lord of all that would believe. So you have to believe those three things. That those are the bare basics of what it means to be a Christian. And you need to believe those things by faith. Amen? Amen. So, uh, why do you need to believe those things? Well, the answer to why you need to believe those things is because sin is real. So, what does that mean? What is, what is sin? Sin, and this is, <laughs> this is my, my crazy definition of sin. Sin is inherited, imputed, personal, prideful, self-destructive evil against other people and willful rebellion against God. So <laughs> that's, that's a mouthful right there. But we're going to get into that definition and we're going to see how all those things apply to what sin is. It's inherited, it's imputed, it's personal, it's prideful, it's self-destructive, it's evil against other people, and it's willful rebellion against God. The effects of sin are clearly visible in the world today, so let's explore some of the big questions about sin. The how, the who, the what, and the why. So the first one we're going to look at is the how. How did, how did sin start, and where does it come from? So let's go to Genesis chapter 3. I'm sure, you know, this, this whole week you probably touched on this quite a few times, and a lot of this might be... That we uh, just review of what you've already covered, but it, but it's it's healthy to review things three and four times and, and as many times until you come to a full understanding of what it is we're talking about. Amen. So, how did sin start? Well, sin started in the garden, right? Yep. And I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but understand, but, but we really pretty much know how the story goes, right? It says the serpent was more cunning than the beast of the field, that the, uh, that uh, more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, God has, in, has indeed said, you shall eat of every tree in the garden, question mark. Has God indeed said that you shall eat of every tree in the garden? So the, the Eve is standing in the garden, the ser serpent comes and talks to her, and he starts to deceive her and starts to, to, to co convince her that she should eat of every tree, including the one that God said not to eat of, right? <laughs> And then in verse 6 it says, So the woman uh, saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to, to the eyes, and desirable to make one wise. And she took the fruit and ate. And she gave to her husband, and he ate. Right there at that last part. And she gave to her husband, and he ate. See, so the beginning of sin wasn't that she took the fruit, but she gave to the husband who was supposed to be the leader, and he ate. Like, seriously, right? like, why are you going to do that? When God clearly told you, don't eat of that tree. <laughs> so so uh, like, let's go back to the definition that I said. Willful rebellion against God. When God says don't do something and you do it, that is sin. <laughs> so don't eat of the tree and if you eat of the tree, bam, that's sin. And then if you look further in, in, in Genesis chapter 3 and says, uh, you know, God, they hid after they ate of the thing. God said, where are you? And then, and then they start blaming each other. He said, well, that woman you gave me, she gave me the food. And then the, and then the woman's like, well, that, that, that serpent, you know, the serpent uh, deceived me. And you know what? God doesn't take excuses. You know, I, no matter what's happened to you in your life, guess what? You're responsible for your own sin. That's crazy, huh? 
Doesn't matter that somebody beat you when you were a kid, that you were abused, that you were poor, that you that you had all this stuff happen to you. You're still responsible for your own sin. And and so so God doesn't let anybody off. He says he 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 curses the serpent and he and he curses all of mankind for the sin of Adam and Eve. And and, and like the first part of the of the definition that I wrote, it's inherited. We inherit this sin nature from Adam and Eve. Because it's, uh, if we're, we're going to get into some of the verses to talk about that in a minute. But before we do that, while we're still in Genesis, Genesis chapter 4, verse 7, now that Adam and Eve had kids, Cain and Abel, Cain uh, brought, a, brought an offering to God, God rejected it, and Cain was angry. And this is what God says to, to Cain in verse 7 of chapter 4 of Genesis. He says, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, check it out, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you, but you should rule over.